What are we doing today, Captain? Going diving. Three deep dives, north side of St. Thomas. Not sure where yet, but yeah. ought to be fun. Rarely <laughs> do we get the opportunity to go do this. So, should be a nice day out there. Yes, it will. Welcome to one of the few dive days we actually get in St. Thomas. And I say few because that's how it seems to work. You get into something, you love it, like we do with scuba diving, you end up working in the industry, and then you never actually get to enjoy it for yourself on your days off. And by no means am I complaining, I love my job as a captain, but it does make you appreciate the days that you have off so you can go and enjoy it yourself. All right, Scott, wait for the, wait for the movie. This is our new home right here. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, St. Thomas and the U.S. Virgin Islands are absolutely gorgeous. The underwater scenery is equally as gorgeous, which is why we need to go and remove lionfish on today's dives. I'm not going to go into great detail about lionfish in this video, but if you want to learn more or if you haven't heard about the invasive species, head to the links down below. The first dive of the day occurred on the west end of Hans Lollick Island on the north side of St. Thomas. There's a nice drop off to about 100 feet where we went down and we found a bunch of different lionfish hiding down below. And I will say, we did pretty well today so I want to make sure we keep track. And unfortunately, due to some technical difficulties, we didn't capture the third one on video. But trust me, we got him. The best part of the reef off of Hans Log was how ripe it was with lionfish. Other than that, there wasn't much life to see. So if you book a dive with a dive charter in St. Thomas, chances are you won't end up here. So if you're interested in lionfish hunting specifically, I would call around to the different dive shops and see who will take you to a distant reef. If you're unfamiliar with the tube that's hanging off my BCD, that's called a zookeeper. It's the best tool to contain lionfish safely so you can bring them back to the surface. On many of the dive sites in St. Thomas, you'll come upon dead pillar coral. Unfortunately, the pillar coral was decimated by stony coral tissue loss disease a few years back. And it might just be me, but there's something about a cold drink with a little bit of a fishy taste at the end of the day. For the 
the second dive, we stayed right in the same spot, since we only explored a little bit of the reef down below. It is 100 feet down there, so we weren't able to spend too much time. And of course, we found lionfish. back to the zookeeper I have with me. It's the only way to safely bring an abundance of lionfish back up to the surface and not leave them down there for a hungry shark to eat. If you leave lionfish for sharks, they're eventually going to associate humans with food. It's an accident waiting to happen. So if you haven't bought a zookeeper quite yet, head to the link down below. dive of the day is a drift dive on the south side of Thatch Key. There's a stiff current here, so it's the perfect spot to drift along and find some lionfish. We like to call the dive Vetty Bay because that's where we anchor and start. Right in Vetty Bay there's an old sailboat that is just booming with life. After that, you move on to nice, soft coral fields that go on for miles. It was a short dive and we saw all the lionfish within a short period of time. Enjoy. something about pistachios after a dive. All right, we're back on the dock. Uh, we're fresh, ready to go. Now it is time to clean all that fish. You can't go wrong with a full set of bubble blades. They're the best knives for filleting on the market. Okay, now when I'm doing this, I'm just doing, there's a couple different methods. Um, how to clean lionfish. Uh, Laura likes to do one way where she takes her time and she definitely yields more meat when she does it. Uh, but when I have a lot to do, all I do is go from the back of the head down to the, I guess it's anus, and do a cross cut right there, get in there and then swoop underneath and then just saw off that nice filet. And then you have your filet just like that. So it takes two seconds, you don't get as much meat, the skin is still on it. I found that taking the skin off after you thaw it is a little bit easier. So about half frozen, that skin peels right off rather than doing it right now. That's my preferred method, especially when I have 10 fish. It takes a long time to do the other way, and this still yields a good amount of meat. And at the end of the day, make sure you vacuum seal it, freeze it, or eat it the day of for some fresh fish. 